Michigan is an agricultural leader in the nation because of our abundance of natural resources and unique farmland. The unique climate along Lake Michigan provides some of the finest places in the world for growing fruit. Michigan produces more than two-thirds of the nation's tart cherries, over half of the country's blueberries, and is a leader in the production of apples, peaches, strawberries, grapes, and sweet cherries. The fertile soil that stretches through the Saginaw Valley has made Michigan the nation's leader in dry beans and one of the largest producers of sugar beets. In West Michigan, the muck and sandy soils make Michigan a leader in vegetables like carrots, asparagus, celery, and the nation's leader in cucumbers for making pickles. Mid-Michigan sprouts acres of mint, and hog operations abound in southwest lower Michigan. Trout farms and Christmas trees thrive in the northern half of the state, and thousands of dairy farms make Michigan a leading milk and dairy producer. Upper Peninsula farms help make Michigan a large producer of summer potatoes. Across the state, huge greenhouse complexes grow more bedding plants, lilies, geraniums, and poinsettias than any other place in the world. Harvest time in Michigan is so rich with colors and textures and tastes. Only California can match our bounty and agricultural diversity. Farming is a proud tradition in Michigan with over 46,000 family-owned farms. But farming is more than a tradition. Agriculture is one of Michigan's leading industries and a major contributor to the state's economy. When we look at uh, the value of agriculture, uh, most years uh, four billion dollars at the farm gate, but $40 billion to our economy. Uh, one in eight people uh, work in agriculture. We're the most diverse agriculture outside of California in the nation. Some 50 crops, 10 of them were number one in the country. We have a big opportunity for exporting Michigan products. And then when you add agriculture to tourism, ag tourism, we're talking about Michigan's number one industry. Because of our agricultural diversity, Michigan is home to a variety of food processors. One such processor is Graceland Foods, which over the last six years has become the largest employer in Benzie County. We are in such an excellent position geographically. You know, we're within a day's drive of well over half of this nation's population. At the same time, we have a very, very tremendous supply of fresh water. We have good soils for waste disposal of the water uh, to irrigate it and, and to get rid of that. And we have a very, very diverse agriculture, which allows us to have commodities of, throughout the season. So with all of those factors, I think that Michigan is probably has one of the greatest potentials for food processing and food manufacturing. Michigan's 10 million acres of farmland also provide many environmental benefits, such as aquifer recharge for watersheds and wildlife habitat, while helping the countryside retain its rural character and open space, which is important for tourism. Environmental quality is enhanced greatly by Michigan agriculture. Uh, in addition, uh, our sportsmen every year are more and more dependent on the farm for, for hunting privileges. So really all at once, in addition to being Michigan's number one industry, agriculture is also, I suppose, our most important environmental uh, quality uh, contributor. And uh, so when you look at uh, the greenness of this state, you have to think about the contribution of agriculture to the environment. When the first settlers came to Michigan, they found many lakes, rivers, and vast forests. The state was a haven for trappers, fishermen, and timber operations. As land was cleared during the lumber boom of the late 1800s, farming quickly expanded, providing food for the growing cities of the Midwest. As a result, Michigan had over 19 million acres of farmland in 1920. During the next 50 years, agriculture quickly became more mechanized and productive, requiring fewer workers. People moved from the rural towns and farms to the larger cities in hopes of greater employment opportunities. Today, however, that migration trend has now reversed. Instead of moving from the farm to the cities, 
Michigan's population is now moving from urban centers out into more rural areas, turning farmland into residential developments and leaving behind declining cities with abandoned facilities. Accompanying this outward migration is a trend toward lower density housing, where many dwellings are located on two, five, or 10 acre lots, resulting in a land use pattern often called urban sprawl. The Michigan Society of Planning Officials recently released a trend future report uh, called Patterns on the Land, Our Choices, Our Future. And in it, it presents um, projections related to population and uh, land to be converted over the next 25 years. Unfortunately, because the density of development that's taking place in this state is so low at the present time, if the current trend continues, between 63 and 87 percent more land will be urbanized in Michigan over the next 25 years than existed before 1990. We're looking at converting as much land into urban use from 1990 to 2020 as existed in 1978 for only 1.1 million more people. That's a huge amount of land to be converted for a relatively small number of people. Current land use patterns have significant long-term consequences. For example, the demands upon infrastructure increase as people commute further from rural areas to their urban jobs. Lower density development increases the cost of providing community services such as new sewer lines, water, roads, schools, and fire protection. The cost of these community services can range from a modest amount over a dollar to more than $1.60 for each dollar that development generates in property tax revenue. In contrast, studies show farmland requires only 30 to 70 cents in community services for every dollar a farm owner pays in property taxes. Keeping land in agricultural production makes fiscal sense to a local community, especially when one also considers the economic contribution of agriculture to the local economy. As development pressures increase, so do land values and property tax assessments, putting a strain on the ability of agriculture to remain profitable and competitive with other land uses. We have farmed this right over in here for 118 years. We were taxed by the uh, township and the county a 20% surcharge for having Lakeview. But the cows right here and that are not appreciating it anymore for the tax structure. I don't think it was fair to tax it for that because we got to look at land as agricultural use, not as if you had developed this whole thing into farm into houses. Michigan is one of the few states that has not implemented use value assessment, which assesses farmland according to its agricultural use rather than according to its developmental value. I think use value assessment is, is very important in keeping the, the property tax burden manageable for operating farms. Um, many studies have shown that, that farmland uh, demands much less in services than it pays in, in in property taxes. So I think use value assessment is, is just an attempt to, to try to make uh, the tax burden a little more fair for, uh, for farmland owners. Urban sprawl not only has many fiscal consequences to the state, but it also has a tremendous direct impact on agriculture. As the population spreads out into more rural areas, productive farmland is converted to residential use and taken out of production. Once converted and paved over, it cannot be farmed again. The issue is very important because agriculture is Michigan's second largest industry. Michigan is an agricultural powerhouse, and we want to stay that way, of course. In 82 to 92, Michigan lost over 800,000 acres of farmland. That's an area the size of the state of Rhode Island. And a lot of that was due in part to urban growth and expansion. That translates so to about 10 acres of farmland lost uh, every single hour of every single day. We don't want to be taking that industry. We don't want to be taking our farms and our producers, our growers, and the crops and the land resources that they use for granted. The loss of over 850,000 acres of farmland during the last decade represents an annual reduction of about $100 million in local farm sales. During this same period of land conversion, over 250,000 new homes were built, but Michigan's population grew by only 33,000 people. Why is it an issue across the country? Because you can look at the history, at the track record of how much land we're actually using up in this country 
and especially in a state like Michigan with a significant urban population. And we can, we can project, in fact, a point in time when we fail to have enough land to, to effectively produce the food uh, for our own people. Ottawa County is Michigan's highest producing agricultural region with annual sales of over $250 million. It is also experiencing one of the fastest growth rates in the state, with a projected addition of 100,000 new residents resulting in a 50% increase in population over the next 15 to 20 years. Land use trends I, you know, are always going to be a concern for farmers, at least those of us involved in row crop and livestock, and even the, the flower and vegetable folks, you know, they use land. And, and when land use is, is dramatically changed, as it will be when you have uh, you know, up to 100,000 people moving in, projected to be moving in in the next 15 years, <laughs> that's a significant amount of land that's going to be used for something different than what it's used for now, namely houses. And I think the main thing that I think farmers would like to see is that that be done in an orderly fashion as much as possible. Southeast Michigan is experiencing one of the largest losses of farmland in the state and that trend may accelerate in the future. The Southeast Michigan Council of Governments projected only a 6% increase in population over the next 15 years, but a 40% increase in the amount of land used for residential purposes in Southeast Michigan. In Washtenaw County, um, over the last 10 years, we lost 35,000 acres of cropland or farmland to different uses. A lot have been development. Us personally have lost over 300 acres of rented land in the last five years to the development of pressures. You know, we grew up here, uh, had a great time here, but I don't think it's gonna be here for my kids. Uh, we're surrounded by development. Uh, we haven't been bothered yet by nuisance suits, but it's, it's gonna come. And plus that, we've lost so much rented land that we can't afford to feed the, the cows we have. So all those things had to take into consideration. But there's land in Washington County that should be preserved. And I think we gotta do something about it. As more people migrate from urban cities to more rural areas, the impact upon agriculture is far greater than just the loss of farmland. The impact upon remaining farm operations can be just as significant. As more people move close to farming operations, land use conflicts and nuisance complaints can result, making it difficult for farmers. Farming operations are offered protection from nuisance suits under Michigan's Right to Farm Act but the increase in non-farm neighbors is still a concern for many farmers. One such example is Sietzma Farms, a multi-million dollar turkey operation in existence since 1975. I would say that the development pressures are probably the number one threat to the long-term existence of our farm. Township had approved the development immediately adjacent to my farm, about 70 condominiums and uh, this is going to be within about 450 feet of my poultry buildings and my grain drying system. And I was very concerned about the impact it would have on my long-term ability to operate my business in this area. I've had some experience in the past, and uh, these individuals that move into the country don't have an appreciation for some of the activities that we have to do in the agricultural business. We've got a major investment here. We would like to see growth in our township, but they have got to be more concerned that they don't do it in a manner that interferes with the ability for us to operate our farms. This farmer decided to take action by putting the development project to the voters. In a public referendum, the citizens voted with the farmer three to one to not rezone the adjacent property from agriculture to residential. As development pressures increase, so does the value of the land making development offers more attractive than farming. As farms come up for sale, the highest bidder is often not the neighboring farmer or a beginning young farmer, but rather a developer or non-farm buyer. It worries me very much, and it's a dilemma of how will I maintain this farm if, especially if we lose the other farms in the area, and I'm one of the few that's left, and I'm developed all the way around me, uh, what do I do with it? Do I sell my property or do I put it into a, like a trust? Um, I know right now in this part of northern Michigan, there's an extreme amount of older farmers 
they're very worried about that. They uh, see their farm as their retirement, and a lot of, in a lot of cases, they've maybe got kids that have left, have no interest in the farm, and what, at what point do they, what do they do with that property? Almost half of Michigan's farmland is owned by farmers over 55 years of age and will change hands in the next 10 to 20 years. It remains to be seen who the new owners will be. Current land use trends have long-term impacts on industries such as agriculture, forestry, mining, and tourism, which are economically dependent upon Michigan's natural resources for existence. What land use trends are in your area? What impact do these trends have on farming in your area? What is the future of agriculture in your county? To everyone in the state, to preserve this important part of our stable economy, the preservation of uh, farmland, especially prime productive farmland and unique productive farmland uh, is especially important. Uh, this is what farmland pres preservation is all about. It's about uh, saving that land which is best suited for agriculture uh, for generations in the future. We've got 36 million acres of land in Michigan. That's all the Michigan we're ever going to have. It's all we're ever going to have. So the more we spread out, the less we have available for wildlife, for agriculture, for the forestry, for the kinds of things that are important to, to Michigan over the, the long haul. Uh, we're all in this together, and Michigan people have got to get together and say, look, this is how we want Michigan to look in the future. We can't just let it continue to develop haphazardly. We, we can't let our best farmland disappear in the wake of, of uh, new development at the same time we let our cities continue to die. Michigan's number one challenge is to keep uh, farmland available, keep quality and diversified farmland in farms, and not pave over all of our good agricultural opportunities. And when we do that, we're also improving the environment for the consumer and the public. Mm -hmm.